bed last night. You took a warm shower this morning. You had a piece of toast this morning. Many wanted to live to see this day, but they did not. So just take a moment and tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Father. You've been a good God. You've been a faithful God. Father God, we come this morning, Lord, not to seek your face, Lord. To seek your face and not seek your hand, Lord. We just tell you, thank you, Father. You've been good. Just think of how good God has been to you. Think about how good he's been to you. Things may not be perfect in your life, <laughs> but he's been good. <laughs> he's been faithful. He's been a keeper. He's been a deliverer. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He's been a strong tower. He's been Jehovah Rafi, your healer. Hallelujah. He's been Jehovah Shalom, your peace. Hallelujah. He's been the stiller of the storms in your life. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him praise. Give him glory, God. We magnify you, Lord. You've been so gracious to us. You've been so faithful, Daddy. We just come this morning, Lord, to tell you thank you. Thank you that you've allowed us to see a second half of this year, oh God. Father, we do not take it lightly or for granted, Father. It's an honor and a privilege to stand before you this morning and just say thank you, Lord. 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 Thank him that you have your loved ones next to you. Thank him that not you or none of your family members were a victim of someone else's error, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, Daddy. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, King Jesus. You have pulled down every mountain, God. You have made straight every crooked path, God. You have parted every sea. You have calmed every storm, Lord. You have made every crooked path straight. And for that, we tell you, thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We praise you. We magnify you. Think, describe, tell him how much you love him. Tell him what he means to you. The unlimited one. The gracious one. The magnificent one. The faithful God. The merciful God. The keeping God. Deliverer. Restorer. Doctor. Strong tower, father, mother. <laughs> oh, who sticks closer than a brother? My favorite friend, my best friend. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We love you, we love you, we love you. We love you, we love you, we love you this morning. Lord, I won't let any rock out praise me, God. You'll hear the fruit of my lips this morning. I love you, Jesus. I magnify you, Jesus. I thank you for who you are in my life, God. Oh, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, God. We dedicate this service to you, Lord God. We thank you for every single one of your children here today. Those who are on their way, Father God. Shield and protect them, oh God. Father, I thank you that this is going to be a service of encounter, oh God. Father God, we cover our pastors right now. Pastor Henry and Pastor Laurie Lavender, oh God. We thank you for their lives, oh God. We thank you for a mighty, mighty man and woman of God who hears straight from the throne room of grace, God. Father God, we ask that you use them, oh God. Father God, we ask that you contend with those who contend with them, oh God. Father God, we thank you for this service, oh God. We thank you that no child of yours will lead the same, oh God. We give you praise and we give you glory, Jesus. We get out of the way, Lord. We say, take away anything in us that's not of you, King Jesus. We say, have your way in this service. 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 We acknowledge your presence, God. We acknowledge your presence, God. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you. We worship you. We worship you this day. Oh, we worship you this day. Oh, we give you praise. We give you glory. Father God, you tell us in our word that when we call, you hear us. 
Lord, thank you that you hear us when we call. You say that while we are yet speaking, you answer, Lord God. Father God, you say that even before we finish praying our prayers, you've already answered our prayers. Lord, we thank you, Father. We thank you that you always hear us when we call. Oh, we call on you this morning, King Jesus. We call on you this morning, King Jesus. We call on you this morning, King Jesus. Blood of Jesus, speak for your children today, oh God. Blood of Jesus, speak for your children today. Holy Spirit, we praise you. We magnify you, Lord God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, King Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, have your way, have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Father God, we just thank you. We just thank you right now, Father God, for your presence, just who you are. As we saturate right here in your presence, Father God, and we dwell in it, we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus for your presence that reigns in this house on today. Father God, we also thank you that we just lift our hands right now in the mighty name of Jesus. As we lift our hands to heaven, it's a sign of surrenderance. And we also thank you, Father God, that it's a sign of joy, it's a sign of freedom. So we thank you that we have the spirit of liberty. We have the spirit of freedom in this house on today, Father God. Free to worship you in this house on today, Father God. Free to praise you on today, Father God. So we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus for each and every angel that comes in the room, that dances with us, Father God, that worships with us, Father God, that praise you, O oh God. So we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus for each and every angel assigned to each and every wall in this building. So we thank you right now, Father God, for your praise that edifies us. So we thank you right now, oh God. We just send up a thank you offering. We send up a thank you offering, Father God. We send up a praise unto you, Father God. We thank you right now that your breath is breathing on us. We thank you right now for the breath of heaven breathing on us. We thank you right now, Father God, for the wind of heaven blowing on us, Father God. We thank you for the wind of heaven blowing on us, Father God. Shift us into a new place. Take us to a new place in you, O oh God. We thank you right now for taking us higher. We thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say that we love you on today. We love you, O oh God. We say that we love you, O oh God. You are so good to us. You are so matchless. You are so kind. And we say that you are our father. You are our daddy. You are Abba. We thank you right now for being Abba Father, for being our father in this house, O oh God, for moving with us. So we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus as the praise team begins to come up, oh God. We thank you right now. Just begin to magnify his name. Just begin to praise him for who he is. Just thank him for being our daddy. Just go ahead and thank him. Go ahead and praise God. Just go ahead and thank him. Go ahead and praise God for being who he is. Go ahead and praise God for being such a wonderful daddy. Go ahead and praise God for being your keeper. Go ahead and praise God for healing you. Thank you, almighty God. We thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. As we begin to praise your name in this house, oh God. We thank you right now for taking us up into a new place. We thank you right now for lifting us up in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name. Somebody open your mouth and give God a big shout of praise this morning. He's worthy of the honor. Hallelujah. Come on, we can do better. Give him glory. Yeah. Clap those hands, everybody. How many know God is great? Come on, praise him. The greatness of. The greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. The love that he shows is unconditional. The power of the Lord is unbeatable. Great is the God we serve. The greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. The love that he shows is unconditional. The power of 
But say it. And greatly to be praised. Everybody say God is. God is great. And greatly to be praised. Let's start back over. Help us say it, everybody. The greatness of the Lord. The greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. The love that he shows is unconditional. The power of the Lord. It's unbeatable. Great is the God we serve. God is great, say. God is great. And greatly to be praised. Everybody say, God is great. God is great. Greatly to. And greatly to be praised. All over the building, come on, God is. Let's say it. God is great. Greatly to be praised. God is. God is great. And greatly to be praised. Oh, 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 oh. God is great. Woo, come on. And greatly to be praised. Come on. Did you hear us say, God is, come on. God is grace. <laughs> and greatly to be praised. Everybody say, God is. God is grace. And greatly to be praised. Oh. your hands, everybody. We're going to keep giving God the praise. Come on. Everybody say, Te amo. That means I love you. Got those hands. Come on, te amo. Here we go. Te amo. I love Con todo. Con todo mi corazón. Come on. Te amo. I love you. Con todo mi corazón. With all my heart. With all my heart. Oh, Señor. With all my soul. Oh, Señor. I love you, Lord. Your word remain. Your words remain forever and ever. Come on, I love your name. I love your name. Jesus the same. Jesus the same. Yesterday, today, forever and ever. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, your love never fails me. Oh, Lord, your love never fails me. Come on. I love the way you never change. 
everybody. Come on, let's get on one accord. All over the building, come on. Let's give God some praise. your praise from my heart to your ears. All the glory is yours, now forevermore. Here I worship, all we can give is for you. We're here for you. Say, oh, oh, oh. If you don't come, we 
won't move with that screen, Lord, for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move with that screen, Lord, for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move with that screen, Lord, for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move with that screen, Lord, for a touch So we dance, we dance, we sing, we sing. We worship. we worship, you are king, we're here for you. So we dance, we sing, we sing. We worship, we worship. you are king, we're here for you. Hey, 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 hey. hey, hey. With that screen, Lord, for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move. With that screen, Lord, for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move. With that screen, Lord, for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move. With that screen, Lord, for a touch from you. Come on, everybody. Do y'all feel free? I don't hear you. Do you feel free? Just one more time. If you don't come, if you don't come, we won't move. With that screen, Lord, for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move. With that screen, Lord, for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move with that screen, Lord, for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move with that screen, Lord, for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move with that screen, Lord, for a touch from you. Yeah. Y'all didn't mean that. Y'all didn't mean that. Y'all didn't mean that. Y'all didn't mean that. Lift those hands up. How many desperate folks in the house? You know you need the Lord. Lift those hands up as we begin to worship the Lord. There's a certain way a desperate person acts. I can tell you this, it's, it's not cool and calm and collected. If you're desperate for God, lift those hands up. If you know you need him every second, every moment, you can't take your next step without him. We got any folks in the house like that? You depend on him for absolutely everything. Lift those hands if that's you. Begin to worship him. Pour your heart out before him. Somebody worship him. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. Come on, lift, through, lift your hands, lift your voice. Don't stop your praise right there. Just continue to bless his name right now. If you can speak in a language right now, just begin to talk to God in your language. Just begin to reach up to the heavens and talk to God. Ask him for anything that you may be desiring for. Anything you're waiting for approval for, just begin to bless his name. Bless his name in this place right now. She see no more shame. Your holy place, and 
to Zion's heights and to praise and glorify unify oh how we love you oh how we praise you oh how we worship oh
Zion's heights to praise and glorify you Just begin to stir this atmosphere in this place right now. She If approval is what you're seeking right now, the only approval you need is the approval of God. The only approval you need is the approval of God. If you're searching for things and you can't find it, all you need to do is just thank God. Look up to God and he's all that you need. You may have gone down that wrong path. You may have turned right, but you should have turned left. But just continue to thank God. Just begin to thank God. no more Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship. Oh, Lord. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship, oh, Lord. Glory. Glory, glory. Give God a hand praise right there, y'all. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't stop right there. Y'all too quiet. Make some noise in this house today. Y'all too hot. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo! My God, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, we just got through worshiping for a few minutes, but I'm looking for a crazy, don't make no sense shout, how God brought you here this morning with your own two feet, Praise the noise. Just say, hey, God, you've been so good to me. Let me hear a shout. Make some noise like this is your last Sunday because you're going to heaven tomorrow. Come on. <laughs> Woo!
Hallelujah. I don't even know if you got any good sleep last night. But I made up my mind when I get to church this Monday morning, this Sunday morning. I'm going to give him my best Dallas Cowboy shout. Y'all hear me this morning. Some of y'all ain't Dallas fans. We're going to catch up, catch up. Some of y'all some Steelers fans. Some of y'all some Green Bay. We're going to pray for you. Uh, all the rest of y'all that's over in the San Francisco and the rest of them people. They don't, re- they don't re- we don't recognize that. Only the blue star. The blue star always represents. So, one more time. I just feel like there's a shout in the atmosphere. I need you to praise God because something is about to happen today. Hallelujah. Something is about to happen. One, two, three. Hallelujah! Woo! All right! Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Jesus. See, y'all gotta forget about the routine how church should be. Just forget about what the next song or the next preach. Make some, I'm telling you, church, we, we forget about the format. Sometimes you got to just go all in. I want to go all in this morning, Pastor. Forgive me, Pastor. We're not going to go by the program this morning. We're going to shout for a few more minutes. Because some of y'all need that man of God. Hallelujah. I don't know what you hold Monday. I don't know what hold Tuesday. But right now in this place, let me give you the microphone now. I'm going to get, boy, whoo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't stop praising him. Just can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. Jesus. Late in the midnight hour, 
God's going to turn it around. Somebody need a turnaround. Desperate. That's a turnaround in this, in this service this morning, Minister Roland. I'm telling you, late in the midnight hour, some, some happened last night. Who I'm talking to? Late in the midnight hour, God, he's going to work.
Take us back. Take us back on anything. Anything. Can you take us back on anything you remember? They got it. They got it. They read it. What you say, baby? God's got a blessing. Remember that? With your name on it. Remember that? It's been a while. Levi know it. Come on, Pastor Lee. Hey! Come on, I want my sister Daisy to come on up. Come on up, Daisy. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, put your hands together. Woo! Makes no difference what you're going through. You're going to make it. God's going to see you through, yeah. Hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. This is another test that they won't last always. So get ready, yeah. Get ready. For your blessing. For your blessing. Get ready. Get ready. For your miracle. For your miracle. Get ready. Get ready. For your blessing. For your blessing. Get ready. Get ready. For your miracle. I know you've been hurting deep down inside. Let me encourage you, it's gonna be all right. Your troubles and your trials come to make you strong. Just keep on believing, you keep holding on. Get ready, get ready for your blessing. For your blessing. Get ready, get ready for your miracle. Ready, y'all. Get ready for your blessing. For your blessing. You got to get ready. Get ready for your miracle. For your miracle. Listen, the word says, "Weeping may endure for a night, but how many y'all know that joy comes in the morning light?" Hey. So what you gotta do is keep your faith in the Lord God, and He gonna make a way out of no way. All you got to know is uh, that the blessings got my name on it. Listen, God's got a blessing. Come on, say it. God's got a blessing. 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 With my name on it. God's got a blessing. 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 With my name on it. Yeah, yeah. Come on, say it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. He's waiting on me. God's got a blessing. It's waiting on me. God's got a blessing. It's waiting on me. God's got a blessing. And it's mine. It's mine.
If you believe it, yeah. I'm going to need you to give God a praise right here. Woo. Because he's worthy from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. I'm going to bless his holy name. Anybody want to give a praise? Say, it's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Need in the house. I don't know what to do from here. I just want to just let her just worship if she had a song in her heart. I just feel like we've been shifted this morning. And just, just for a few more minutes, I know we, the program has all been out of place because you guys kept on singing. I don't know what happened to you. Uh, you got guests in the house now. It's all messed up. You guys got to go back and say, they messed the service up because they kept on. Hallelujah. Don't you like coming to a church you can't predict what they're going to do? Oh, yes. Let's go. Hallelujah. I love coming to a service where it's order. It just, it just, it's, you got to know when and, and let God do, do, do God. Because it's all about him and not about me. It's about the mission. It's about purpose in life. God has so many things been set up. Somebody says a set up to be blessed. We're supposed to move on to the announcements right here, I believe, in the video. Hallelujah, yeah. I just want to worship. Help me out, baby. I can't see. Lenita Smith here. What song? <laughs> yeah, sing it. Just hit right there. Get Grace. You remember Grace, baby? Some of it. Whatever you don't remember, that's real. Hope we'll harm it. Y'all forgive me because I want to do something totally different today. I just feel like I didn't want to be out the box today because I have a program, Pastor. Hear me. And I want to go by the program one way, but I know this, the shift to do something different. If you remember some of the words of grace, if you remember, I know it's been a while. Say, think about it, baby. Somebody help out. Grace. Can you, can you play it? It'll come in. You think about it. Hallelujah. can't see, I'm going to call Chris Walker up here to sing. And I'll call Chris in a minute. Hallelujah. Okay. Is it coming to you yet? Great. To my rescue. They know it. I want to praise. Oh, oh, oh. 
coming, coming. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Glory, glory, it's coming. This is Hallelujah. I can't remember. Okay. Okay, she can't get she can't get it. How are we looking around at our announcements? Y'all coming over there? bring him out. Where would I be if not for your grace? Yeah, yeah. Carrying me through every season. Where would I be if not for your grace? You came to my Sing, where will I be if not for your grace carrying me through every season? Where would I be yeah. if not for your grace? Hey. You came to my rest. Come on. And I want to thank you for
Y'all feel it right there. Can y'all feel it? Can you feel it? Grace that prepares. Grace that redeems. Grace that releases me to worship. Grace that repairs yeah. visions and dreams. Grace that releases miracles. Your grace. everybody in this room want to tell Anita I love you. I miss you. I know you're in California, but I, I love when you come back home. I get it's like a, a kid on Christmas morning when I see you. I really, I do. I, I, I see success on your life. And uh, I've seen some of your stuff recently, and I know that you are a, a waiting to happen, a Grammy Award winner. I see it. You, you got the goods, and uh, it's just a matter of time to write somebody and say, hey, where has she been all this time? And I know you met a lot of people in, in, in Cali. I know you met a lot of folks up there, but I think the right somebody going to take you under their wing. And I don't speak about my, what's this guy, uh, uh, everybody to follow under now, but I just see other people that going to you connect with. And uh, trust God. No how high you get, how whatever position you have in life, trust God. You hear me this morning? Whatever position you have in life, I don't care how high you get, how much money you make, trust God. Whatever position you hold in the world, trust God. Whether it's singing, whether it's acting, whether it's you working on the in the field or working for law enforcement, it doesn't matter. Trust God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to move right along real quickly because the time is getting late and it's getting hotter outside. Are y'all in a hurry to go home? Are y'all in a hurry to go home? Where you got to go in about the next 30 minutes? Oh, my God, that's beautiful. Y'all forgive me, Pastor Henry. I'm not speechless or was word, uh, lost for words. I'm just waiting for something just spontaneous spark up in this in, the, in this room today. We usually at this time pray for our two countries. So if you will stand on your feet.
That's what we do here every morning on Sunday morning. We pray for the United States of America. And we pray for the, the country of Israel. So, Father, this morning, before we move any further, we pray for the United States of America, the country we live in. We thank you that you allow us to live in this country of freedom to speak, freedom to worship, freedom to do anything we desire. And so, our God, I thank you now that this country will still stay free. God, you're causing another man to be over this country whose decision people don't always agree with. But we pray for him, oh God. We pray. Let him be surrounded with men and women of God who trust God, trust you. Fill his mind, God, with scriptures, God, to keep him on his ways. We pray now, God, that his cabinet, his staff, also walk in the integrity and in, in the light of the, of the word. Also, God, we pray for the country Israel, Jerusalem, the, the country where Jesus was birthed out of. We pray, Lord God, that all the wars and rumors and all the things taking place will cease and dissipate. We thank you that you cover the Israel and all the Jews and all the people who connected with this country, God, because... The United States of America is inside of Jerusalem. So we pray now there will be a peace in both sides. We bring, oh God, that your, your, your angels be on side to these two countries to bring us to the right destination in on time. We give you praise for it, and we all say amen. You may be seated. Do we have our announcements for prepared? Pastor Lori. You've got a hand pray for Pastor Lori. Let me get a table for Pastor Lori, somebody. Let's give God honor and thank him for your life. Hallelujah. Thank him for your life. I give God glory today for you. I thank him for life today. And I don't say that merely in light. I thank him for life today, Pastor. I thank him to be alive and able to see you and to say that I serve an almighty God and that he can't do anything wrong. He, it's amazing. You serve somebody that can't think wrong, can't do nothing wrong, but he can fix wrong. He can give you the results that you need for your life and for your family's life and for your future. I thank God today in our Grace and Women's classes, those of you that don't make it here at 9 o'clock, you are missing a meal from heaven. You are truly missing a word from God. I know we get so deep, we don't, need, we don't need to get word before we get to church, but sometimes the enemy is sending those bombshells throughout the week that you don't see coming. And so you go through a lot through the week, and by the time we make it to church, Pastor, we don't have no praise, we don't have, can't lift your hand except we tell everybody to raise your hand. But if you are alive and you know that God has done everything done everything but hurt you. You can't do nothing but raise your hand and tell them thank you. Every onslaught, every sabotage, every plan of the enemy, he has diffused every plan of the enemy in your life. I say that so bold because the enemy will never have a foothold in my life in no area. I don't care where it is. He'll never get me to commit adultery. He'll never get me to go. He won't get me to do it. You understand? Because I know who God has called me to be, and he's calling me to be righteous. So if I live righteous, then I live holy throughout the week. If I live a life of worship, that's how I live. Then I'm going to say it again. I ain't going that way. Anything that the enemy can do to you to distort who you are and to distort you knowing who your God is, that's exactly what he's going to do. But you have to be open for the plan of the enemy. And last week, the Lord began to tell me to tell the church that the enemy is sending out plans, and he's got those plans with your name on them. And he said, he's got blessings with our name on them. He said, but for some reason, in this hour, we're missing it. He said, tell the church. He said, tell the church. It's time to stop playing church. And I know we hear this all the time. We hear it all the time. But you know, Noah told the folk that it's going to rain. Over and over again, he said, it's going to rain. No one believed Noah that it was going to rain because Noah didn't look like the part. He didn't look like a real astute person. You crazy. You out building the ark talking about it's going to rain. It's never rained before. That's what God want to do. He want to do something you've never seen before. Can you believe that he's designed already things for you that you ain't never laid your eyes on the spirit realm? I don't know how many of you have seen the story of Shaq, the movie Shaq. 
But in the movies, Jack, the guy Jesus, they played Jesus, the guy played Matt. Uh, uh, Matt. When Jesus walked with him, he began to walk with running across the water. But there's a time came where he had to process life yeah, and come back and go to that same water that he walked on with Jesus. But guess what? We get to the place in life where we think we know a whole lot. We think, I don't need you right now because I think he got what I want or she got what I want. I don't care what you do. You never go without lacking Jesus. And so in the, in, in the movie, he ends up going through life and, you know, kind of start feeling this stuff. Hey, I can do this. But he goes back, mother, and got ready to walk over that same river. And he's beginning to sink. He looked back over at Jesus. He said, what's up with this? He said, you know, it's better if we do it together. See, if we do this with Jesus, if we go ahead and cover it up with him, so some things can happen in our life and we stop being so big-headed, like you got it so together, I don't need you. God created the world that we need each other. You can't live without your wife and she can't go without you. So we're in a season where we feel like we, because we got a little word, got a little education. Got a couple of college degrees, got a couple of PhDs, got a couple of bachelor's and master's degrees, and we don't need Jesus. But when life hits your house, my question to you, is he there to walk you through it or you don't need Jesus? I got this now. You never get so old. You never get so educated. You never get so holy that you don't need Jesus. Glory, glory. Y'all hear me today? We don't get to the place, Pastor, and just because we're passionate, doing well, blowing up big churches and laying hands and delivering people. Glory, glory, glory. And we don't need Jesus. Yeah. It's because of his blood. Yeah. Come on now. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm full because yeah. when you stay with the Lord all week long, that's how you, that's, you just come in full. Yeah. And you don't need to, you know, if you got some fumes, you can kind of sit next to me and get some of what I got. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, you got to walk in this world, son, with your powerful self. Your destiny is so big, so bright. Purvis Jr. There's Purvis Jr. in there. That's the only one. What's Philip? It's big. Just big, baby. Don't, and don't accept and don't receive mediocrity. Because your birth wasn't even mediocrity. It was, I don't even know how you were born. But it wasn't even mediocre the way you were born. The way you sat and sat your mother's womb, it wasn't even mediocre. You got to understand that is something so huge, so grand for your life. And you can't let nothing stop it, nothing frustrate it, nothing hinder it. It's big. It's big. Hey, boo. I dreamt about you this week. And so blessed. I saw your mom this week and didn't understand it, didn't know she'd be here today. I said, God, Miss Sylvia, your, your prayers are being answered. And I said, I know you see. Now, she, now she's nowhere around me. She's in, she lives in California, doing great things, doing wonderful things in the earth. But a mother prayer got her there. You see, you can't do it without Jesus. I'm walking hard now. I don't care where you at right now. I don't care how your swag is right now. You can't do it without the almighty God. You can't do it. Somebody have to pray for you. Glory. And I could just sometimes I could just beat the devil. Because he let that, let that system over the, the system of education just educate us so much. We just educate God out. I told my kids, you guys finish school, you better not get so big headed that you don't need God. Who you think gave you the brain to sit in class and be taught? Who you think put the instructors and professors there to teach you? Who you think gave them the skill, the supply to give you what you got? You think you're doing it by yourself all because you done made it? I don't know where that's coming from. That's not what we're talking about. Please. Please. And I bind the spirit that resolved itself against the word and knowledge of God. Only the pride of man causes you to fall. And you miss the true destiny of God. Y'all hear me? We are in a very pivotal time. And we need to be cognizant of the fact that we have an enemy. And his name is Satan. He does not like you. 
He hates you. He hates your assignment. He hates that you're a man. He hates that God's going to do so many great things in your life. He hates the fact that you gave your life to Jesus. He hates it. Because we can fall 77 times in a day and want to get back up and dust ourselves back off. He couldn't. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So before we go on this fast this week, die to yourself. Get selfless. Get less self of yourself so that the almighty God and the plans of God for your life rises up on you. And you can walk in the power and the anointing. Yes. And you can do everything Jesus did. But we can't do it because we're so full of ourselves. We're so big, Jane. We're so full. So the fast comes this week to clean us up and to get us ready for the more, for the greater. This world is getting worse. It's not getting better. Now, the saints, we're doing good. Those of us that know who we are. And I heard a pastor pray about how our president, how he doesn't make great decisions. Well, no president has. If we listen to the right president, and his name is God, and we take pray to Jesus, the Christ, whoa, things can go well for us, amen? So no matter what he does, no matter what the world does, we have a Savior. As old folks said, and he's sweet, I know. Oh, so sweet, I know. Dark clouds may rise and stormy winds may blow, but I'll tell the world that what? He's sweet, I know. I don't care where you are, what pitch you in, how much money you get, how less money you have. If somebody loves you, don't love you, reject you, it does not matter. He's sweet, I know. Chris, when you become Dr. Chris, I'll smack you in the glasses off your face if you ever get haughty. I said, he's going to be Dr. Chris Walker. He's already set that in the atmosphere. Then in what, four more years, you say? Dr. Chris Walker. But if I ever see him do one of these numbers on me, oh, I bet you, I'm going to just. <laughs> how the old folks say, I remember, boy, when you didn't know who you was and how you going to walk up on me and act like I ain't another number. And I'm not saying he's going to do that. What I'm saying is <laughs> Satan will bring you to a pinnacle in your life which make you think you've arrived. And just when you think you've arrived, he'll snatch the rug and let you see. I'm going to share this and I'm going to sit down. Uh, one of our clergymen, Fred Price Jr., just sat down out of ministry. And my heart been heavy ever since. Those of us that are pastor's children, we go through things that folks don't have no idea. So while folks talk about us, talk about the pastors, and one thing I heard in a pastor's meeting this week, a pastor, he said, people don't know what pastors go through because while you're at home with your one, your one problem, somebody done called and said they diagnosed me with cancer. Somebody else called and said I just lost my job. We get the weight of the world just like Jesus did it. And what pastor don't love your members enough not to care? And said, Jesus, I got a call last night that one of our members have cancer now. That it returned. Sitting down studying, I stopped. I said, Jesus. Jesus. Uh-uh. Jesus. So now I'm in a war for this person. So when people say, them pastors, you have no idea. When our mind is kept, it's because the blood keeps it ours. When them folk out there don't have Jesus and their minds ain't kept. When Elijah ran up under Jupiter tree, running from a, a, a Jezebel, all he was saying was, oh, I bet my city of God probably put me out the church. In the children of Israel. All he was saying was, to hell with all this. That's exactly what he was saying. I just said the word. He said, I'm gone. I can't go no more. This, this is it. See, that's what we said. Then God turned right around and just restored us back. Come on, baby. I know. I understand. Jesus already done went to the cross for that. Come on, baby. I got you. Y'all don't go. They don't want my cook. I said, he said to hell with it. And there have been days I've said to hell with it all. I'm not cussing because I'm saying that's what my state of mind was. Because we act like we saved, but we ain't never thought nothing, did nothing. 
I just want to help y'all stay safe. And stop walking around walking in condemnation. As if a pastor, apostle, ain't nobody never done nothing wrong. It's a lie. Now, I'm not saying willfully go do nothing, but we have our days where we get tired. And we want to say, take the church. Go on with your go, go, go. That's all Elijah was saying. But he sent him a ram in the bush. Come on, baby. I got you. I can't let you die. You too bold, boy. There's an anointing on you for nations to help the nations. You a prophet among prophets. And that's all God said to us sitting here. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I won't let my son's blood be in vain. And that one word is coming back to me, boy. Not one word that came out of my mouth concerning your life. And your life is not going to come to pass. The only way that it don't come to pass, James, is that we don't cooperate. Well, I'm going to cooperate with the blessings of God on my life. I'm tired of going through. And I want to see the manifested presence of God on my life. And I want people to ask me, how in the world that y'all pay off a church with less than 100 people or less than 200 people? It's called faith. How is it if your people, you got 200 people, and everybody's an entrepreneur, and everybody's millionaires? See, your mind can't really hold that because we act so low anyway. We don't think we can live above that. Because society says that we cannot. But I'm letting you know through the fast, I'm, I'm still talking about the fast. With the fast, y'all. We can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask or think according to the power that God has given us on the cross, which is his blood, to overcome every obstacle that we go through. I am an overachiever. I am always victorious. And I boast in it. You see Satan boast in your face about everything he does to you wrong. And guess what we do? We chew off that tree and believe what Satan said. Well, I believe I'm an overachiever, and I believe that I am strong, and I'm building strong and victorious lives. Yeah. If you stick around me, stay close to me long enough, you will find out that you are blessed in the city fields and everywhere that you go. Come on. You see, we got to change the mindset. Let's change the mindset. Uh, do, we have, do we have these passed out? Are these passed out to everybody? No? These are your um, Sunday announcements. Today, of course, we have men's Sunday school. Uh, the men are meeting in Pastor Henry's class in his office. He's meeting with them at 9 o'clock. Bro Dr. Brewster, amazing job. I hear that you are doing awesome men. Y'all not in the class? And nobody even clap. Yeah, wow. Was anybody in his class? <laughs> Were y'all in class this morning? Awesome job, Brewster. And the women's class, Grace Mentoring class, is absolutely. It is absolutely phenomenal the way the Holy Ghost comes in, undress us, and then dress us again. <laughs> he makes us take off us, and he puts himself on us. And so we thank God for that. It's amazing. We will have 200 women at uh, 9 o'clock in the morning in this church. I don't believe that. That's like a pep rally. I said, we're going to have 200 ladies in here every morning at 9 o'clock. I believe it. Amen. And we're here each, each, um, we'll be here this Tuesday. We will be with Alicia Gibson this Tuesday at 7 o'clock in this building. Uh, we're doing deliverance service this week. Praise the Lord. Because we're going to need to be delivered before we <laughs> start this fast. So she'll be here on uh, Tuesday at 7 o'clock. And the pastor decided that he wanted to do deliverance classes. That's the problem with pastors. Uh, we don't go get help. We feel that we don't need counseling because we're saving with Holy Ghost filled. You don't need counseling. But I tell people every day, me and Pastor Finn, to get us a counselor that we'll have, that we'll go see every 90 days. Just see everything good with me and him. Because we deal with so many, everybody else's issues, trying to help everybody else. Are we good? And so um, he's getting ready to shift the church in a different direction. I can't release that yet, but it's a good shift. Hallelujah. It's a real good shift. It's a multi-million dollar shift, and we thank God for it. On this coming Saturday, the 15th of July, you want to give that announcement, Brittany? Uh, we will be here on the 28th of July. We will do our back-to-school um, event. On that day, they're going to have something called um, Let's Make a Deal. So we're going to be here that night at 6.30 for the children. Uh, don't forget to pay our pledges. We are believing 200 people to pay $500 toward our building, to pay this building off. 
and we have it paid off in three months, praise God, and that's going pretty well. August, the first Sunday in August, we're going to do a vision month where we let you guys know how much money we took in last year, what was the giving, what happened, what we sent out. We hadn't done it in so long, it was like, pretty was like, ooh, it's been a long time. So now we're slowing down, we were able to get back to some things that we need to uh, let you guys know what's going on. Also, I said today that someone called and said that their cancer uh, reappeared. Uh, they got sick. They went to the hospital last week. They passed out with a seizure. And Sarita Dotson, one of our members, uh, the cancer returned. So the Bible tells us that the, that, the, that, the, that the enemy cannot come a second time and claim us. So we're going to believe God for her healing. And we're going to still believe in God for Miss Dewana's healing. She is already healed. Miss Dewana's cancer-free. She's just going through her clean sweeping things. Also, we will give you a packet today uh, on the fast. It's the Jensen Franklin fast. We're going to do with 21 days. That fast starts. We Tracy have them. Mr. Jones have those. They have them. Oh, great. Great. Okay, so we're going to go by this, this, this time. We'll start tomorrow, uh, and then we'll go to the 30th of J July, and we'll end on that Sunday at the 30th after service. I do believe that is it besides telling y'all that you're looking at a millionaire. See, if my mama had a said, or my daddy had a said, they're a millionaire, whether I understand it or not, yes, Lord, because what's on my daddy and mama, whether they pay the house note or not. <laughs> Come on, talk to me. I'm just trying to bring you my help. Lord told me the other day, he said, you're believing me too low. I said, me? Me? He said, you, I need you to come on up here. I need you to come and take something that's sitting right here. And your faith can birth it out for the church. I said, use me, Jesus. So in a shot, I'm ready to go get that meal. Because once I get it, and we don't have to get it first. You all, one of you all could get it first. Get rich first, Michael Jordan or his dad. So, do the father have to receive it first? What's wrong with y'all? Y'all not hearing. What's that, Chris? Chris is not ready. There are millions in the earth waiting for us, waiting for us, waiting on us. And we sit and wait for somebody to give us something when you got the ability and creativity in your hand on the inside of you to make something happen. Why are you waiting for somebody else to give you something when you get all you need on the inside of you? You don't need nobody else to stuff and stuff. God say, okay, I need you to go and take them this. What's wrong with us? Why are we waiting for somebody? Folk in line waiting for the folks to pay the utility bill and when it didn't happen, they got mad. You should have been trusting God all the time. Okay, I'm going to leave it alone. Go on, Brittany. That's a whole other story. <laughs> uh, real quick, at the yard sale, it is this Saturday. So if you're going to uh, be a part of the yard sale, please see me after service. I need your name and phone number. Um, it, you can put anything in there, jewelry, shoes, children's items, uh, fr furniture, whatever it is you want to sell. Remember, whatever you sell, you can keep. Just give 10% to the church. We want to bless the house. We can get our building paid off. Amen. And we're going to sell food as well. And they'll, be, they'll all go to the church as well. The, all that will be going to, to the church. Um, but just see me after service. So um, by Wednesday, I need to see how much stuff you have and see if it's, you know, one or two items. You know, that's cool, but we need some bulk of some stuff, some substance to sell, right? Because you can bring some money home and home to the house for God, right? So see me after service. I'll get your name, the number. Um, and then that Friday, we're going to be up to Friday to bring it. So that way you got to do it Saturday morning. It's going to be that morning around, what's that, 7 a.m.? 7 a.m.? Saturday morning? T to be de determined <laughs> on the time that comes here. But come Friday to bring your items here so you ain't got to worry about it bringing it Saturday. Because I know I got a lot of stuff to bring, so I'm not going to bring it Saturday morning. Cross the street, okay? Um, if you have any questions, come see me at the service so I can get your name, okay? Amen. 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 Let's give God a hand praise for that. We give him glory <laughs> and we thank him. I can't think of anything else besides saying happy birthday to Ella Quilla. Her birthday was yesterday. <laughs> I asked her, how does it feel to get younger? Hello. Today is Gavin Turner, Chuck Turner's birthday. Woo. Oh, woo, woo, woo. And who else's birthday? Is it? Talk to me. Who else got a birthday? 
Ju July 19th. Rashata Bay. Yeah, woo woo. I can't turn her numbers around. Her numbers too low. I turn her numbers and make her go up. <laughs> and your birthday to an album? 23rd? Okay, everybody, birthday this month, stand up for us. Come on, stand up. Happy birthday. If we're going to sing happy birthday, how are we going to sing it? How are we going to sing it? Not the old one, it's stale. <laughs> That's my child, a little girl. Happy birthday to stand up, y'all. Happy birthday to Happy birthday, happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Got that lavender jacket on. Happy birthday. Happy. That feels good. Birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. It's a lot of y'all. Happy birthday. Clap it up. Woo. Are there any anniversaries, any love day? No love day, no love day in July? No love day in July, but love day for married folks is every day. I ain't going to go there. I'm going to live it where it is. Because y'all know I can go there when it comes to the couples, right? Amen. At this time, we're getting ready to receive our word, the word of God today. But as I said earlier, you can make your way to the platform. Uh, Miss Steve, you can make your way to the platform. Oh. Uh, he going to sing before Pastor get up. Oh, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. You do whatever you want to do. I just want the anointment, baby. I want nothing else but the anointment. <laughs> but this is of us, Steve. We love him. He's so sweet. And I thank God for him. He just moved to Memphis from California. <laughs> She's in California. And I just moved to Memphis, California, and we were out there doing some things one day, stopped by, and he said, I'm just looking for a church home. I said, I ain't there. You leave. You looking for one. You ain't going nowhere else. And I got over to you. You got the right one, baby. <laughs> praise God. So let's give God a hand. Praise the Minister Steve. Come. Pray for me. I haven't sung in a while. Um, before I left California, uh, I was working two full-time jobs. So I was barely getting to church. I didn't make it to choir rehearsal. But <clears throat> I woke up this morning. I, well, I didn't expect to sing, first of all. <laughs> uh, my voice is a little scratchy, but just pray for me. This is an old song. I do know other songs, but I want to sing this song. Um, okay. <laughs> God sent his son and they called, they called him Jesus, he came to earth to heal and forgive. He, he bled and died. Just to buy my pardon and life is worth the living just 
Because he lives, God sent his son. And they called, they called him Jesus. He came to earth to heal and forgive. He he bled and died just to buy my pardon and life is worth the living just because he lives he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear, all fear, they are gone because. And my life is worth the living that one then. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, that was a rich man of God. Because he lives. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. I don't, know how you can be, I don't see how you guys can be feeling on that one right there. That was kicked it to the bank this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet, please. Hallelujah. That was rich, son. Hallelujah. I'm proud of you. Glory. Glory to God. I'm proud of you in so many ways. Father, I thank you this morning for what you're about to say this morning to your people. Whether it be long or short, I come out the way, I get out the way and let you move. Lord God, there's some people in this room that may need to hear this, and some already heard it before. But I thank you, Lord God, they're in a place now that change is inedible for them in their life. I thank you for the supernatural, the anointing on your word. I thank you, God, for your presence. We don't take it lightly. I thank you for those who, God, who has been called to the mission. I thank you for those, God, who are about to be called. I thank you for the releasing of the your grace in this place. I thank you for all the men and women of God who's 
moving in, in the right direction. I also pray for those who are lost and being hindered. So I thank you now, God. Whatever you're going to do, you're going to do it. I trust you and always will. This house will always praise you until the end. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, may everybody say amen. amen. You may be seated. I always say that I'm not going to be long. And I say that, but I really mean that. But you all get excited and make it go longer. I praise God. I just don't take this moment lightly. Man, that was rich. This is the first time I'm singing in this church. I don't know where he used to go to. I don't know. We never got in that conversation, but wherever, wherever you were, you're coming out of it now. Say it. Come on, Pastor. Wherever you, were, wherever you were, there's change on you. I mean change and shifting. How we say the word shift, change, whatever it may be. You're about to walk in something that you've been looking for. Your best days are yet ahead of you. The best is yet to come for this church. Yes, it is. I said the best is yet to come. Yes, it is. I'm not going to be long. I'm not going to be loud. I don't know. It depends on how you all act. <laughs> Pastor, I'm full. I really don't want to go in the front of it to just give God praise. But I want to give you a few 15 minutes, of, 10 minutes of word. If it's just 10 minutes because it's already after 12. I said something last week to you, everybody, and I want to cover it one more time. Pastor, I preached this message last week, and there's a few more things I want to add to it. I said to you all, if you were here, I said your words become your reality. Say, I need a word. It's in you. It's in you. Your words become your reality. I'm going to jump all the way down to some of my highlights. Proverbs 18. If you got it, turn it quickly. Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18, New K King James Version. You deserve it. I know it. I'm hard. It's, it's, oh, I hear it. You deserve it. Yes. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Yeah, behave, Pastor. Proverbs 18. You got to say amen, somebody. Amen. Praise God. Verse 20. Your words become your reality. I'm going to cover this again. Proverbs 18, 20 says, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruits of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall be filled. Verse 21, highlighted. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. Yes. What are you saying and how you say it too? I got to curse him out. What you say? A man's belly, Pastor, should be satisfied with the fruits of his mouth. I told the class this morning, I said, I'm, I am so into my change that I'm speaking things that yeah. there wasn't there before. I don't have to stay in poverty my whole life. I have experienced it. I lived in it, but I refuse to live and stay in it the rest of my life. I've been on Section 8, man of God. I've I, I, I received the substance. I've received all of it before. I'm not putting that down, but you don't have to stay there. Those who are watching by television, those who are watching by stream, you listen to me, your life will change today. Say with me, today, I'm about to change and experience a new harvest. So how are you going to do it? Because I'm going to use my mouth to do it. The Bible says, 21 says, death and life is in the power of the tongue, oh, and they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. So what are you eating? 
What's coming out? Somebody said, what's coming out of your mouth? God, I love it. I'm going to hit it hard real quickly. St. Mark 11, chapter, St. Mark chapter 11. You heard it a thousand times. I preached it a million places. St. Mark chapter 11. This is where we all live our church behind. That's our, that's our church scripture, man of God. Verse 12. So if you got to say something, got it. The next morning when they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. And he noticed a fig tree full of leaf, full leaf a little way off. I'm reading from New Living Translation verse. Do it may be different. So he went over to see it, see if it would, couldn't find any figs. But there were only leaves because it was too early in the season for fruit. Jesus said to the tree, listen to what it says. Jesus then said to the tree, may no one eat ever eat from your fruit again. May no one ever eat your fruit again. And the disciples heard him say it. What are people hearing you say? What are people hearing you say, Christians, tongue talkers, baptized on Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, church? Praise the Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord. Tell them highly favored. Highly favored. The disciples heard people hear what you say. One thing, and then you turn around, you hallelujah on Sunday, and on Thursday you say stuff that does not line up with your character. Jesus made this, he made this, he did this on purpose. He, he did it on purpose, he said it on purpose. He said, may no one, he said, make this tree a person. He like, church, a tree with a personality. May no one eat from, eat, eat, ever eat from your fruit again. If you read the rest of it, go down. Verse 20. The next morning as they passed by the tree, he had cursed. The disciples noticed it. You see, people going to remember uh, what you say, man of God. Come on, Pastor. Come on now. They going to remember what you, wait a minute, you said you have faith, but then you just said last week that you trust God, but now you, you in, what's, what's going on? What happened here? People going to remember what you say. The disciples noticed it, that it had withered from the, from the roots up. Peter rem remembered what Jesus had said to the tree on the previous day, less than the previous day, and explained, Look, Rabbi, the tree you have cursed has withered and died. Wow. Verse 22 says, Jesus said to the disciples, Have faith in God. I hear people say, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm ahead of my notes, have faith in prayer. He didn't say have faith in He didn't say have faith in prayer. He said have faith in God. There's a difference. Now, none, prayer, we know we, we, we pray this conversation, communication with the Father. But he said have faith. Have faith in who? God. Mama now. City of Memphis. God. Sanitation workers. God. The Grizzlies. Y'all had a conversation in the, in the men's room that yes, this morning, and it, and it bothered me. I had to. I want to share this with you real quickly. I, I tossed and turned all last night. Uh, what happened in Memphis? Some of y'all. Most of y'all know what happened. And then we passed on when I was driving this Saturday morning. We, we noticed that a lot of people was out in lines getting in to pay some bill. We called our son about it. We called people about it. And deep down inside, it bothered me. Yeah. I couldn't find the answer for it. it. I couldn't figure out what's going on. It got so bad that there was some fights in some places, locations. And, 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 it, and long story short, it was like 10,000 or more people in those lines. 
And uh, it bothers me, Pastor, it bothers me, all those people in line thinking they're going to get something for free or at least a small discount. But I thought about the church. I thought about how many of us are, have been deceived. That bothered me. How many saints was in that line? How many, how many, where were, where was, or where is the discernment to know something does not add up and continue to go with it? You know it don't feel, but you still going. I'm going to pay, get my bills paid, and I'm not, listen, I forgive you because we all make mistakes. We thinking we're going to do something, but, but th- last night, Pastor, it, I couldn't rest. I said, Lord, how come so many people were deceived? So many people were deceived. And then, it's, and, and uh, so far, I haven't seen any explanation why they even did what they did. Who is this? Who said one thing causing all those people to do what they said? Somebody made a t- told a lie, and the half of Memphis went down and followed with it. You have what you say. It could be a demonic, or it can be spiritual, prophetically done. You have what you say. Somebody has deceived so many people. We got to reverse this thing, y'all. Facebook all over the place. Verse 22 says, have faith in God. I tell you the truth. You can, ha- you can say to this mountain, your issue, your problem, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen. You must really believe it will happen. And listen, this young folks, and have no doubt in your heart. What are you saying you don't really believe what you say? I tell you, you can pray for anything, young people. And if you believe that you have received it, it be yours. Glory to God. Now, I, I caught that and I grabbed that and I received that. But there's always something else to go with this picture. You can have all those things. There's one thing you lack. Read the next verse. Before you get to that point to get all this stuff you're looking for. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone else, who in here been praying, paying tithes, giving your shout, moonwalked, and you got something, somebody cut you. Somebody cut you. Somebody hurt your feelings. And you still holding on to it. For even to this morning. Who I'm talking to? Even this morning you're holding on to it. Dang, Pastor, you know, I love you and I appreciate you. And you're a good man, man of God. But I ain't, I, ain't through with, I ain't through with him yet. I ain't through with her yet. You know, Pastor told me to go do this uh, last week. Pastor go do this, and and uh, then he get on me for not doing it. And you could not even hurt by the pastor. Who hurt you? Who hurt you? Who offended you? The Bible says, and when you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, who have cut you, offended you? See, offense. Can you handle what you say? Oh, it, come on. Without a battery, the car won't start. Jeez. Pastor, you can have a car, Cadillac, Bentley, man of God, it's full of gas. It lacks one thing. A battery. Oh, I'm hurting somebody's feeling. I'm sorry. Anybody you have not let go and said, Lord, I release Joe Blee or whoever. I release him, I release her, so my prayer can be heard. Forgive him, listen to what the rest of it says, forgive him or her that your Father in heaven may also forgive you of your trespasses. It's some dirt somewhere. Come on, yeah. Pastor, you don't know, I've been saved since I've been saved. You know, I, I gave my life to Jesus 35 years ago. 
then the first person should be on the front of the altar right there who said that. I'm here every Sunday, man of God. I'd be the first one to say, Lord, help me because I'm not perfect. I made some mistakes. I said things I, things I, I, I shouldn't have been around. Y'all listen to me this morning. But while I'm doing it, I'm saying, Lord, forgive me so I know I have a clear conscience. I know I have a clear access. I want nothing hindering my... I hope I'm helping somebody. See, we, 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 we want the gleam, gleam, the bling, bling. We want, we want those things. We want to live good. I told a man to God, I said, I refuse to be in a certain place in my life every year. I won't change. I'm get, I, I, refer, I refuse to be in a certain place. So I began to change my world over 10, 15 years ago. I said it, man of God, some years ago. And then recently, I had, a, I had a nice car. I mean, this car was an Audi. Can't nobody touch it, my Audi. It was black. It was looking good. Air conditioned, DVD, everything laid out to the side. Bought this car. Didn't tell Pastor Laura. Went on my way. Didn't talk to Jesus. I, I went. This my money. You hear me? My money. I work every day. I can do what I want to do. I'm a grown man. Can't tell me what I can't do with my money. Y'all better listen to me. I said to Antoine, I went on my own. Went down to Atlanta, so proud of myself. Picked up this car, y'all. Young man, Caucasian brother, took my check. He was smiling. I didn't know why he was smiling so hard. I, I got the car. You, I'm a smile too. He had a shine, so shiny that when I was driving, the people were like turn their head. It was extra glossy. <laughs> I wanted to get on the road and see what it can do. It was a V8. It actually, actually, the Audi 8 has a Lamborghini engine. So I said, I'm going to see what this thing can do. I want somebody to try me. <laughs> I want any, any comers come. I'm, I'm on Atlanta driving down, uh, uh, what's the street? 20. Don't 20. And here come another Audi. I said, you want some of this? <laughs> so anyway. So months go by, I'm driving my car, months go by, I know the light came on the main, the engine light, the check engine. <laughs> but I said, there ain't nothing wrong with this car, just box this car. <laughs> and then one of the signs, one of the signs kept showing a strut was going out. I said, strut, there ain't no strut, I'm going to ride this, ain't nothing wrong with this car. Messing around, y'all, I had to get the car fixed. Just had it, I ain't had it maybe half a year yet. Cost me how much? Twenty-two hundred dollars. But as I had a month, the strut went out. It was five thousand dollars for an Audi, oh seven model, not a twenty eighteen. This is an oh seven. For five, so I kept looking around and found somebody to give me a good, better deal. It was down to two thousand. That same month go by, then the, the front hood of the engine began to fade. I'm trying to wax it and wax on, wax off, wax on. Before Pastor Laura see this car, I'm, I'm waxing on. It's shining for maybe a good three days. And she said, me, what's wrong with the car? It don't look right. I said, it's just a wax. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you know I'm about to hit in the, uh, it's about to hit the fan. Now the car began to fade. And the other things in the car began to go down. And so one day, uh, one day, the car in the garage, and, and um, um, y'all, w- watch what I'm going to say to y'all. I'm, 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 I'm still with the subject. The car sitting there one day in the, in the garage, on all, all the shocks that went out. It shut down on all four. <laughs> we used to go on driving her truck to work in church anywhere, and I got tired. I said, wait a minute, she needs her own car. And I said, so one Saturday night, I walked out of the garage, and I looked at that car. I said, God, forgive me. I did not come to you first. And I did not talk to my wife about it. This is for married couples. I did not, we didn't come into any agreement. And I, and I said, Lord, forgive me. And I took communion. I took me some communion by myself. And she didn't have no idea what I was doing. I took it and said, Lord, forgive me for buying this vehicle. It's, I don't have the money to keep getting fixed. But I need to get rid of it before, God, before I retire. I said, God, show me what I should have bought and what I need to buy now. So I'm looking for cars, and I got tired of looking for, I got tired of looking places, looking places. And I said, wait a minute, I got to preach what I've been, preach what I've been preaching. I have what I say. 
after I took communion that night, I looked at that car and said, you will be sold to a dealership. And I'm going to drive me a better vehicle. And I said, but Lord, you got to show me what I got to drive. I, I said, Lord, show me what I need to be driving because I will go buy me a Mini Cooper. I'd be happy. I was going to buy me a Z, BMW Z4. I was going to buy something fancy and sporty. I'm young like that. I haven't looked at a charger and said, nah, well, how do I look like going to trip with a charger, driving a charger? <laughs> the, with the Hemi. Then I looked at where I looked up the Hellcat. I said, I don't want no hell in my driving. I don't want I looked at, I know, and then I looked at I looked at Corvette's pastor. I had, I had I could afford it, but I had to get rid of this car first. So I'm I so I said, God, show me. Show me what to drive. So I told the man in class and said, that night, this is under God, so that night I had a dream. I had a dream that I saw the front grill of a Cadillac. And when I saw it, it kept flashing in my face. <laughs> Just the grill. So I said, oh, I'm going to get a Cadillac. <laughs> so I started looking for Escalades. I'm looking for Escalades. And I found an Escalade, y'all. I ain't talked to her yet. I found an Escalade, man of God. So I'm going to go look at it. It's black, black on black. 2014, it was at low miles on it. I said, I'm going to show Pastor, I made this car over. He said, I want you to go look at this car. I said, I'm tired. We go look at the car. We go look at the truck. And she looked at it, and she got back in the car. I said, man, what are you doing? <laughs> Take your time. You ain't seen the whole car yet. It, it don't matter. It don't matter. You know, they, 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 hold up. Y'all, I'm going somewhere with this. Stay with me. She said, got scratches on it. They got scratches on it. It's a used vehicle. So she said, oh, you go look on the inside. So I didn't look at the inside. I looked on the inside. Oh, ooh, I, I can't do that. It had some issues that I didn't want to deal with. If I bought it with this amount of money, I want mine to be a little more classier. So I said, God, I'm going to be still. Where is the car that a vehicle I need to be driving? He led me to call your vehicle. I'm going to help you all out. I didn't have no idea why. When I just felt led, I felt an unction to, to go over here. And I went over there, I, I saw a vehicle that there's no other car at the time in Memphis was being sold. And I'm going to tell you my story. It's a Cadillac, XTS. But this is one that the, all the, the dealerships the hard don't sell that much. It, it was a four-wheel drive with the V engine. Makes it the platinum. It was the top of the line of the Cadillac car. I said, well, I'm going to trade my car in. I said, now, this car got to be. So I took my car. The, the Audi out the garage, and I had it, a little work done to it to get where I'm going. I'm riding down Collierville. <laughs> they thought I was, they thought I was, I was being cool. <laughs> what you say, man of God? They, they laughing at me. I was riding, hit a bump. You know, I had made up my mind. I'm not going to drive this car home. I got it gone. Everything gone, man of God. I spent money in the shop. Reached about the day before I got it out to go to look at this car. I said, I'm going to trade it in. I said, I don't care. Something's going to happen. We get down there, y'all. I looked at the car. I had this time, I, had, I owe 11000 on the car. I'm already upside down. So I told him, I, you give me at least 6000 for this. For, he said, we can work that out. But some stop, some change. The atmosphere changed. He looked at me. He said, Mr. Lyon, what's that on your neck? I said, what, this right here? He said, tell me what that means. I began to share with him the gospel. <laughs> hey, glory to God. I said who Jesus is and what he's all about. I said, I, I, I cut the cone. I said, this represents the fish, the, the, the Jewish star, the menorah, of the, the candles being lit in heaven, and it always been. I began to share him about the custom. I mean, I wasn't prepared to teach. <laughs> now, by that way, I'm talking, man of God. I got a white people looking at me. He was sitting there looking at me, and he said, you know what, Mr. Lyman, I got about 10 of my friends are Jewish. You telling me somebody ain't never told me. He said, uh, what you want for your car? I said, I'm trying to get at least 6000 because I, I figure I'm managing my mind. I manage that I can, if I take six, whatever left over, I can, I can work that out on the, on the loan. I said to myself, I have what I say. I 
said, I believe God. I said, God, I trust you. I said, now, I said, Lord, you gave me this dream out the I mean, the whole time he talking to me, I'm seeing what the dream was. I'm saying, God, I trust you. I, co- I quoted the scripture. I have what I say. I said, new car in the driveway. I spoke that that same night. I, 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 drunk, I, I took my communion and my bread. And I blessed it. I said, I'm going to have a new car in the driveway. The man, y'all, the man said, uh, how much you want for this car? I said, at least 6000 because it was only worth 5500 and I owe 11000 on it. And that's all. I only can get 5000 for the car. So I'm asking for, asking for six for some brakes. And I can take you, I can work the balance of it out. He said, give me a few minutes. I said, you got it. Let me see what I can do. I didn't know he was the owner. I thought he was one of the salesperson. Come on. The owner came back. He said, the owner came back. He said, uh, I don't care what they said. Mr. Leno, I'm going to give you. Let me back up. I owe 10000 on the car. 10000 on the car. He said, Mr. Lamb, I'm not hurting you to make any deals. He said, but I'm going to do something for you I've never done in a long time. He said, I'm going to give you 11000 for your car. <laughs> hey, who I'm talking to? I said, what up, Pastor? What up? Now, I get myself right with God. Now, I'm saved, sanctified, and speaking tongues. We, we're, we're Christians, so when you line yourself up back with the word, things begin to line up in your favor. So, so I'm speaking what I believe. I'm saying what I should have. And then God give me what I should be, should be driving. And he said, Mr. Lamb, I'm going to give you 11000 for your car. I, so this, this, this is the truth. She wasn't in the room. I sat down in that chair, and I said, I'm going to look around and see if it's a candid camera. <laughs> I said, you playing, man. You playing. You playing. I, I did this. I said, sir, you, you can't be serious now. I'm, I'm, I'm intelligent. I'm, 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 I can be cool. But I could not be serious. I said, sir, you playing, are you? <laughs> I said, no, I'm serious. I said, hold on a second. Let me see if in the camera's the back. Is there a microphone under here? Maybe it's, I don't know what's happening. And I was, for that moment, for a second, I was like in awe because that was not normal. I'm expecting us, us we'll give you this money because I've been to several car lots. And he told me to give me five for it, give me six for it. I said, no, I'm not, I'm, this ain't it. Because I didn't get the Kelly Escalade, I waited. I went to her and we said, baby, I need you to agree with me. Come on. I need you to agree with me. And I'm going to pray this way at the same time. I took communion. I did all, I did everything I think I need to do. So I can be lined up with what I have, what I say. So, so after, after all that, he said, I'm going to give you 11 for the car. Call her over. I had to pay a little small down payment. But when I, before the day was over with, the man said, Mr. Thompson, I don't need to show you something about your car. I said, which, which car? Your Audi. Well, you ain't mine no more. <laughs> well, let me show you. Since you he said, uh, let me show you something. We went outside, Pastor. We went outside. I parked the car in a place where can't nobody really see it. <laughs> I had washed and bought it the best way I could before I, I put some smell good on the inside. Because I don't want to take them anything. He said, Mr. Thompson, your car is sitting down. I said, no, it's not that part. <laughs> no, it's sitting on all fours. I said, well, I won't be driving it back home. <laughs> I'm serious. The deal wasn't even done yet. We just talking. Man, I called Pastor over there, Pastor. I said, we gonna, he said, you will not drive that car home. See, I have faith, and I'm strong. I'm the man. But it took my wife <laughs> to come in and say, baby, how you put it, baby? How you put it? He said, baby, uh, we're going to make this deal work. How you said, we're not done that come back home. And when I heard I said that, muscles came in my arm. I got, I turned the super, when well, my wife said, you ain't driving it. Boy, I said, I'm, I'm for real. I began, I had found some strength that I didn't realize it was there, but it came up out of me and said, baby, you ain't driving it. I said, baby, I'm going to take you where you, you want to go this evening. He said, you will not drive that car home. It's not the day. Man of God, you pastor, y'all, all I'm saying is you have what you say. But you got to be in agreement Come on. with the word. 
And if you're married, you've got to be in agreement with your wife, your spouse, or your husband. Now, single folks is a different story. That's another story. I'll teach that later. But those who are married and finna get married. <laughs> what you say, baby? Single folks, I ain't, yeah, same thing. Well, let me say this here quickly. Since you're not married, you're just you and Jesus. You don't need to worry about no man. So all I'm saying is I wait it. I spoke it. I believe it. But then it's a, it's something has to take place. You line up so you can receive what you have, what you say. What's part, baby? Deposit. The, the, uh, the, the 3000 How much? Oh, come on. Yeah, I'm just excited. She told me I couldn't get it. I said, oh, no. You, I, you couldn't get it. Like you gave me this. Hot, I'm hyped up now. Now you say I need it. Something worked out. You can't do it. I must forget all of the lingo he said, baby. I can't remember all of the lingo he said. Is it worse than you thought it was? So, well, you even told me. <laughs> you, you, it's in worse shape we thought. I said, well, you didn't already told me this. You didn't told me, so I'm going back what you said. You can't go back what you said. Now, you can't give me hopped up and said, hoped up. Oh, no. You made a point that you were giving me this, and we called my bank, my credit union, and they already agreed. So, the car, I don't mind sharing, the car was thirty some thousand dollars 36000 I'm about to retire. I can work this out. Got to the bank in my credit union. Y'all gonna don't speak on wrong when I tell you this. They paid off the car, and my loan for the car was twenty thousand. Twenty four thousand. So I only paid him twenty four. Twenty four thousand. That's right, baby. I only paid him twenty something. That's they said the bank said because you've been so good. On your payment, they're gonna eat it up. They're gonna eat it up because my payment's been just so good. Just eat it up. Just, just bless it. Just eat it up. And the car was twenty four thousand. And so my note from my Audi was one price. I only went up when nineteen dollars. So that ain't no big. What's twenty dollars? So I ain't missing a beat. Who I'm talking to? When you in line up with God and your spouse. Children, listen to your mom. Children, if you're in the, in the kids in here, in the kids and teenagers, listen to mom and dad. We have an experience. Lord. Lord. Who I'm talking to? Young folks, when you get our age, you better trust God. You better listen to mom and dad. Ooh, glory to God. I'm telling you right now, it, 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 it's, it's good to know when God has you in his best interest. I could have messed around and got the Cali Escalade. I've been crying today. <laughs> it looked good on the outside, but something wrong with it. And listen to this, y'all. I'm going to go. I'm going to cut off. The, on the, the, the dealership at the Cali Escalade said, Mr. Latham, we're going to give you full warranty if you buy it. And now this is a, a 2014. And I said, it had a few miles I was concerned about, like 60,000 miles. And then I said, what's wrong with it? He said, well, it's not certified. That bothered me. You're going to certify a Cadillac that's not at a Cadillac dealership. Now, you can get certified car dealership. You can get good warranty, but it didn't bother me. It, it, something didn't feel right. That's all I'm going to say it this way in, in English. It didn't feel right. The warranty sounds good. The deal sounds I just couldn't go with it. So, uh, so Something sounds so good. Slow down and wait and trust and, and, and answer God. Is, should, I, should I go or should I not go? Should I buy or should I not buy? Should I date him or date her? Should I? Should, who, who I'm talking to? That house looks good, but should I buy that house? It, the shoes look good, but should I, this is a good time to buy the shoes. It, so I'm telling God, said God, I put all my trust in your direction. And he said he would, do, he would, he would give you the, like your pathway. So all I'm saying is stand on your feet. I'm going home. You all are hungry. Pastor, forgive me. I'm all over the place, and I'm excited because we are in the right season in the right time to be blessed. Yes. Say so we are in the right season. Yes. In the right time. Yes. To be blessed. Yes. Hallelujah. We're about to go home. Hallelujah. Say out the head. And not the tail. I shall always be above. And never beneath. This day. I say with my own mouth. I'm the blessed. 
and highly favored. Highly favored. Good, things Good things are coming my way. Coming my way. Today, Today is my ship. Is my ship. Today, Today I'm the blessed. Said today, today, I am the healed. I'm the healed. Nothing is wrong with my body. I'm completely restored. Now I'm, I'm healthy from top of my head to the bottom of my feet. God called me when I was young. Now I'm on my journey of success. I believe I receive what Mark 11 says. I have what I say. Blessings are looking to bless me. My family, my mom and dad, my pastors, my children. We are the blessed. And not the curse. In Jesus' name, give God a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory, every eye closed. You don't bow your head, but close your eyes. Father, I thank you now. The eyes are closed in this room. You know who they are. You know what they need. You know where they're going, Lord God. So, God, I pray for the person in this room, God, that's looking for a direction, looking for a, a answer. And, God, I pray that what was said and done today, God, will help. give them and spark their spirit. If you're in this room right now and you want to give your life to God and you have not done that, please come down front. Hallelujah. If you're in this room right now and you're looking for a change, a, a church change, if you're in this room, come down front. If you just want to rededicate yourself back to God, come down front. All those opportunities now is for your changes now. Today is the day the Lord has made and you shall will be glad. Hallelujah. In it. So I thank you right now, God, on all those invitations. I call you now to the front. Invitation now. You would say, Pastor, I just want prayer. I just want somebody to, to lay hands and agree with me. If we didn't get a chance to do it with you, now it's time that we can pray with you and agree with you to make, Lord God, the, the, the blessing of God that will overshadow take you. In the name of Jesus. Anybody else? Anybody else before we go home? Anybody else? Anybody else? Glory to God. If you all blessed, it's fine. But anybody else? Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. 